morning. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church. On this, the third Sunday of Advent, a few announcements before we begin. Annabelle Scalise entered the church triumphant on Friday, November 27th. We send our condolences to her family. As the end of the year approaches, we want to remind you that there are a few ways that you can continue to send your offering to the church. You can mail it, or you can drop it off at the church office using the black mailbox outside of the glass doors. Our treasurer requests that you still send in your yellow envelopes if you have them, or write your envelope number somewhere on your offering. This makes it easier for him to create your giving to your envelope number. Due to the rapid increase of COVID-19 cases, admission to the office is now restricted to staff only. This is for the safety of our staff and their families and for the congregation's safety as well. Offering envelopes and Redner's receipts can be dropped off in the secured black mailbox outside the church office. Food donations can be placed in the vestibule. Masks must be worn when dropping off food in the vestibule. Thank you for your cooperation. We will be holding an outdoor Christmas Eve service with Holy Communion and candle lighting on December 24th at 7 p.m. The service will last approximately 45 minutes. Please bring your own candles and lawn chairs. Masks and social distancing are mandatory for this service. For those who are not able to attend this service or are not comfortable attending a large gathering service, we will be recording a traditional Christmas Eve service with the annual Children's Christmas Pageant, and that will be available on our YouTube channel. Recorded services will continue until further notice. Please check out our website for past services, musical offerings, and other information. If anyone has any other announcements they feel need to be made, please contact the church office. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Your prophets spoke of a day when the desert would blossom and waters would break forth in the wilderness. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Strengthen our hearts as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. May he give water to all who thirst, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Reveal your face to us and give us light. Amen. The first reading is Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will give faithfully, give them their recompense 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks herself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed. He did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, 
What then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you neither are the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. I need a word of hope. Yes, Advent is the season of hope, but I need a word of hope. With the continuing bad news about the pandemic and the isolation we all feel by keeping our distance, wearing our mask, staying away from each other, I need a word of hope. There are those among us who, whatever the conversation is, however it begins, it winds up being directed on them. You know somebody like this? They must say something about everything. And before we know it, the conversation is all about them. And then there are people who are just the opposite. They draw out the lives of others. They are interested. They, their conversation is not about themselves, but they draw out the information about others than themselves. The light doesn't shine on them so much as they shine the light on others or another. I recently read an article where they call these people parsley people. You know, parsley, the stuff that sits on top of your meal that you don't eat. It just draws attention to the main event. I like parsley people. They help me pay attention to something beyond themselves. John the Baptist was a parsley person. He, when asked, who are you? What are you doing? Simply started by saying, no, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not Elijah. I'm not the prophet. I'm not, I'm not. Then what are you doing? I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. The parsley is removed and the main event is seen. I need to be around people like that, who help me see beyond our present circumstances, who help me see beyond themselves, and direct me to the main event. John is not the light, but shines a light as a witness to the light, the light who is coming into the world, Christ himself. John focuses not on himself, but on Christ. And we do well to do the same. It is our call as the people of God to be partially people for Christ our Lord. But how often do we focus on the things that are not the Lord? And now we struggle because we may have at one point focused on things around us, things that we can't deal with anymore, things that are physical that we can't get to, like the wonderful, and it is wonderful, building of Advent Lutheran Church. But we can't go there right now. 
Things like the gathering of the, the faithful on Sunday morning, which we miss dearly. But we can't do that now. And so our lives <clears throat> are focused not on what is is or what is possible, but on what can't be. So now what? Now we're in the midst of a, of a pandemic, and we are told not to do the things that we want to do. And my hope is that you have plans that don't include family gatherings for Christmas because it's so risky. So we need to pay attention not so much to the things that we'd like to focus on, but the things that are beyond what we can focus on now. 2020 is a year that we're, <laughs> that we're going to soon want to forget. But we, as the people of God, have hope. And the word of hope is that it's not about anything that we know, but what is coming to us in Christ our Lord. This is where the first reading you heard this morning has so much power for me. I don't know if you realize it, but that first reading from Isaiah was the prophet talking to the people. And it's Isaiah 61, which is all the way down at the end of the prophet Isaiah's writing. The people of Israel <clears throat> had been for decades abandoned in the wilderness, so to speak. They were held captive outside their country. And now they are returning. <clears throat> and the invading army has decimated the city of Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and they are coming back hoping to see the things that they're familiar with. But they aren't there. And they struggle. They need a word of hope. And so Isaiah says in the words that you heard this morning that God is coming to comfort those who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. I don't know about you, but some days are better than others for me. When I hear that there are people in this passage that mourn those who have a faint spirit, I hear a lot of us in these dark days of this pandemic winter. But this is a God who does not leave his people. Ah, the temple may have been destroyed. They are away from everything they love and, and endure and, and what long for. But now, God is with them as God has always with, been with them. God comes in the midst of their brokenness to provide hope in the midst of their sorrow, their mourning, their struggle. This is the message of the gospel. This is the message of the parsley person, John the Baptist, who speaks to people who look for a word of hope. This is where, and I don't often get to preach on all three lessons, but the second lesson you heard this morning gives us a suggestion. Now, 1 Thessalonians is the oldest piece of Scripture in the New Testament. It's the first one we have that was recorded. And Paul is writing to a congregation that's struggling. They are a they are really having a hard time. And so what does he tell them? Not something like, shape up. But here's what he tells them. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice. Pray. Give thanks. It's when we become the parsley and our lives 
point not to ourselves, but to the greater gift of God. Now over my shoulder you see my Advent candles. And I've been enjoying watching the Advent lighting of the candles by families in our congregation. It's delightful. And what that does is give a message in our homes that it is not about us, but it's about what God is doing in our homes. God is calling us to a message of hope in the darkness, lighting the light of Christ for us so that we might rejoice, pray, and give thanks in all circumstances. A story. Before a young man left for a journey, a long journey, he handed a letter to a woman he intended to marry. Quote, It is a pledge of my honor and love, the young man assured her. Days turned into months and months turned into years, but the young woman never heard from her beloved. As time passed, she became more and more depressed. The young woman's friends urged her to forget the traveler and to begin to see other men. She steadfastly refused. One day, while looking through her desk, she discovered the letter her beloved had left to her. She read it slowly, and her spirits lifted. In the days ahead, she read and reread the letter many times. It gave her great comfort. Finally, after many years, the young man returned home. I am grateful but amazed that you are still waiting for me, he said. How was it possible for you to remain faithful during my long absence? Even you don't understand, the young woman said. I believed in you because I had your word in the letter. I believed in you because I had your word in the letter. We believe because we have God's word in the letter. This is a word of hope. This is the parsley that brings us to a vision beyond ourselves and our current moment, into the eternity of God's grace, into the spirit of God who fills us in this time of hope. And so I conclude my message today with the conclusion of what Paul writes to the Thessalonians. He says, May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of power and might, <clears throat> shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for people and everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming the good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for your people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm especially in the survivors of the recent hurricanes that hit Central America. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and the helpless. You clothe us with strength when your spirits are when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon our congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Strengthen the witness of all congregations in the West Berks Mission District, especially today as we pray for Allegheny Lutheran Church in Nowers and their pastor, Zach Laubaugh. May they be a gift to their community and to each other. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, we offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.